Hello students, today in your geometry class, we're going to be solving triangle proofs using ASA and AAS. Now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to prove triangles are congruent by using ASA and AAS, or angle angle side and angle side angle. Now, theorem 4.2 states that if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So they would read it as triangle CDM is congruent to triangle XGT. In postulate 4.3, the angle side angle postulate, it states that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So it's important to mention in the angle-angle side theorem, it has the two angles, and the side that's included is not in between them, hence the reason why the side is listed on the outside of the two angles. In theorem four, or in postulate 4.3, angle side angle, the side is listed in the middle, and if you look at the angles mentioned, that side is in between the two angles, like so. So that's the difference between the two. Now let's try a couple. For example one, it says, given angle BAC congruent to angle DAC, and line segment AC is perpendicular to line segment BD, we're going to go through and solve this really quick. So, of course, step one is given, or step one is the easiest, and we know because it's given. Step two, so let's make sure we're keeping track. For, the first, for our first statement, we solved for an angle. So, here's our angle right here. Now if we look at 2, AC is perpendicular to BD. Now because those two are perpendicular, it means that it forms a 90 degree angle. Therefore, angle ACD is congruent to angle ACB. And the reason why we know that is because definition of perpendicular lines. Okay, so we've now proved another angle. And if you remember from our last video, anytime two triangles share a side, you can say that those two are congruent. So AC, line segment AC is congruent to line segment AC. And that reason is because it is reflexive property, which is another side. Now, just because they're listed as angle, angle, side, or along the left side, doesn't mean that's what it is. We are going to highlight the picture. So here's our angle, here's our angle, and here's the side. So you'll notice the side is in between the two angles, so we could say in line 4 that those two triangles are congruent because of angle side angle. Let's try another example. Line segment QR is congruent to line segment TS and QR and ST are parallel. So that's going to be our first step. And that's because it's given. Line two, actually let's make sure we're keeping track. This is, we proved the side. And because it mentions that these two lines, line segment QR and line segment ST are parallel, then that should automatically make you think that some set of angles are congruent. Now because they're congruent, then we can say that this angle and this angle are congruent because of alternate interior angles. Therefore, angle RQT 
is congruent to angle QTS because they are alternate interior angles. Three, three is, well, we also have QT because the two triangles are sharing sides. So QT is congruent to QT, line segment QT, because those two angles are reflexive property. So anytime the two triangles are touching, it should be an automatic that you have the reflexive property. So now we've proved another angle here, and we've proved the side here. So we actually have these two things are congruent because of so the two triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. So those are congruent because of side, angle, side. Now, just to mention, you could have gone another route here. You also had No, that's actually the route I would have taken too. That's probably the cleanest route. Now, for all of these, keep in mind, you don't have to have it in the same exact order that I have it in. Contrary to popular belief, you just need to make sure you're keeping track of it. And the way I do that is by drawing on the triangle. Now it's your turn. Try the problem below, or try the problem on this page, and when you've completed it, post your answer to Edmodo. This may require you to type it on a separate sheet and upload it as an image, but this, that's probably the best way. That's all for now. If you guys have questions, let me know. Bye-bye.